Welcome back to the grind for a guide on the Loki Karina's Challenge where you can only bring a three-star Loki into Act 5 content, the final quest with the Ultron boss. Now I do recommend going up against Electro because the buffed Yellow Jacket is a ridiculous opponent to fight with, with Loki and Electro is not that bad. Now when I did boost up I used uh, health and attack boosts and it gave me a little extra health to survive a little longer and then I lost the recording so I came back in with no boost active just to show how I did it. Now what I planned to do is only attack as many times as I needed in order to get to one bar of power and then stop attacking um, and then throw the special one because the special one has a non-contact hit on it so the more damage you do with that non-contact hit the less damage we will take back against you and if you need to just like that you can just kill some time dexing backwards letting your power build up with his signature ability so that you can get more of those special ones and if you want to you could do the entire fight that way and actually get a solo but Playing this way with intermittent attacks to keep him pushed up against the wall and allowing some time to build up power here and there. And then in a situation where I didn't have an opportunity to get an in, I didn't want to parry or take blocked hits to lose health. So I would just kill time, dex back until I got a special one and then throw it just as you just saw. And doing this, I was actually able in my first attempt to take off 50% of Electro's health. And in this example here, you're gonna see it'll take me down to 50% and I'll have been able to take off about 20% from Electro. So if you extrapolate that, that's 40% from Electro with um, my full health. And that's unboosted in any way with a pretty um, good pace of using basic attacks as well as the special ones. So that's how I found it worked best. Then after that, you are going to want to take path A with the rage because that is actually going to benefit you in some situations but also the fights are all fairly straightforward most of them have very simple to evade special attacks and so you can just put them over a bar of power to get your ends and not have to parry or block as much a lot of them even have buffs that you can take advantage of for example hulk you can see he gained a fury and then you use your special one to steal that fury and then you get some bonus damage when you attack into him and most of the fight you should be able to have a fury active now if you do you want to push all the way to a special three and get the curse onto the opponent then any buff that would trigger instead goes on to you and all you have to do is throw a heavy attack now and then to reapply the curse duration so that is another very effective way of going about several of these fights and you can do that if you choose if you feel like you can easily counter an opponent with a heavy attack otherwise you would have to parry to get your ends and hulk was not one that i felt i could counter his special one easily with my heavy attack now with king groot he has tons of buffs that you can steal. Now, the one thing is when you steal the Furies, you actually prevent him from triggering the regen. And I decided that I wanted to heal up with the regen. And that is obviously something that I recommend you do in this fight so that you can top up your health. And if you have Mystic Dispersion Mastery unlocked, then you'll get a lot more benefit out of this as well. Because if you let his Furies expire, you will basically fill a whole bar of power. He'll trigger his regen and then you can throw off your special three. And since you'll be stealing his regeneration very frequently, you can actually parry him to throw off your heavy attacks to continue to keep that curse applied. That way you'll be constantly stealing his furies and his regen and keep your health topped up quite nicely throughout the fight. So now you can see we're gonna throw a heavy attack to reapply that curse and we're waiting for those furies to apply. We're taking some blocked hits because it doesn't really matter because now we're stealing all his furies. And then you can see here with that curse applied, he goes to trigger his furies and we get the furies as well as the health and a bunch of power. And now we're taking blocked hits, which doesn't really do much to us because we have the regen going. And then we have two bars of power now, and um, I think we're waiting to get the Furies on us. And then as soon as we get those Furies, we throw the special two, and we get some good damage on him there. And you can see we got the solo there. Um, it was more than 121 hits. I did, I think, take a hit there. Then going into Kingpin, Kingpin is an interesting one. You can't rely on parries or debuffs, of course. So even if you do apply the curse from special three, it might not trigger. And you can see there we tried to reapply it, and he removed it. So you can't rely on that. But something nice about the Kingpin fight is he has increased power gain. So you can actually put yourself in a loop where once you get him over a bar of power, 
um, you can just try to push him as high as possible and use your special two as soon as he crosses one bar of power. And I haven't started that loop yet, uh, but we're gonna see how that works here. A nice thing is that he has a very easy to evade special one, so you don't really have to worry about taking blocked hits. Now, we're pushing him over a bar of power with pretty much every combo. And right here, he goes over one bar of power and I'm throwing my special two. This is going to push him very close to two bars of power. And then when he throws a special one, our next combo is going to push him over a bar of power again, so we can easily bait out another special attack. And then our next combo again after that is still going to push him over a bar of power for another easy special attack that we can bait out. Now, um, he was being a little bit tedious here, so I had to wait a little bit for him to throw it. But once he throws that, then we're gonna be able to do another combo, getting him right around one bar of power, throwing off our special two again, and that's going to then push him close to two bars of power one more time, and then we can continue that cycle. Now I accidentally parried there, um, but it is what it is. Then against this Gwenpool fight, also very simple special one to evade. All our specials are pretty easy. Um, I did get the solo on that one with just about 300 hits. Unfortunately, I missed most of the, the fight's recording, but there was nothing special about that fight. And it's very similar for this rogue fight as well. Simple specials to evade. All you have to do is push her over a bar of power. And if you need to, if you can't get an in, if you're low health, you don't want to parry and you're not comfortable baiting heavies without taking blocked hits, you can just wait for your special one to fill on its own and then throw that off to give the opponent some power. So you can just get into a rhythm in most of these fights and not really have to worry about taking blocked hits. Now with Rogue, I felt like she was rather aggressive, so I was able to do lots of backdraft intercepting quite easily, and that was one of the main ways I used to push her over a bar of power, and it allowed me to primarily throw special twos, which seems to be my preference. I don't know if that's just because I like that um, I like the way that it looks. I feel more comfortable throwing it. Also, I feel like I can manipulate the opponent's power better with a special two because it does grant more power to the opponent. That's just kind of my preference for a lot of these fights unless they had buffs that I could steal to take advantage of. So this is pretty much the cycle, pushing them over a bar of power, throwing a special two to push them even farther over a bar of power. Sometimes it triggers rage even. So in those situations, I would then use a special one to steal the fury and then get a little bit of extra damage out of it. So that is pretty much the rogue fight there. Now this fight was another solo. I did start the recording a little late. This one is kind of annoying because he has a very long special one animation, but if you'll see there, you can bait heavy attacks to push him over two bars of power. Then you don't have to wait out the really long special one animation. So let's take a look here. I do four hits on the combo and then I hold block and that's gonna um, trigger him more likely to throw a heavy attack. And then I can bait that and dash back in and do another combo and push him over two bars. So I ended up doing that quite frequently in this fight. He does gain fury buffs, so I did often try to use special ones to steal those fury buffs. Preferably, I wanted to do that at a time where he would not throw his special one. So either when he wouldn't gain a full bar of power or I would try to do it when he was going to have two bars of power or again, do that situation where you bait a heavy attack even though he has one bar of power and try to avoid taking blocked hits as well. And there are situations like this one right here where you can throw the special one, he won't get a bar of power and you can just dash in at him while he's standing up and get an intercept there so that you can maximize the use of that fury. Because when he does throw that special one, as you can see here, since it's so long, it does kill a lot of time on that fury. Another thing that you can do is you can push up to your special three. Um, here's another example of baiting the heavy attack when he has one bar of power so that you can prevent him from using that and push him over two bars. Um, now, I did end up pushing all the way up to a special three so that I could try to keep that curse active. And if you're comfortable doing heavy counters against his heavy attacks like that, um, as well as his special one spacing, which can be a little bit tricky at times, then you can keep that curse active throughout the entire fight. And then you'll be able to steal his buffs that he triggers here and there, which is definitely very nice to have um, to boost your damage and your crits a little bit. So it wasn't that bad of a fight, but it did take a little while um, and it took a bunch of hits, but it's very nice to not have to use any revives or items on that fight. And what was that? Uh, 250 hits just about. And then the next fight we had was Star Spider-Man, which was kind of an annoying fight because of the evades. Now, I recommend not using any five hit combos. You will see me doing that sometimes here, but it did bite me in the butt sometimes. So a lot of times I try to just end with four hit combos and then dash back so I don't get caught with him evading the 
last hit of my combo. You also don't want to throw a special attack unless you have just stunned him or used a heavy attack recently. And some of the timing of my dexes was a bit off. As you saw, I just got hit in the face. Um, also, you can just go up to a special three if you would like. He doesn't really have buffs that you can take advantage of, but it gives you a little bit of damage over time and you don't have to worry about him evading the special three. Alternatively, I do recommend healing up for this fight so that you can parry, throw a heavy attack, and then use your special attacks after you've put his AI down. That way you can get some additional damage from the special one or the special two, which does help the fight go a little bit quicker. But here you can see I did go ahead and throw the special three sometimes as well. Now the Ultron fight can be very annoying, uh, but I'm going to try to share some tips that I have to help it go a little bit more smoothly. Now Ultron is going to evade. Every seven seconds he'll get a 100% chance to evade, and when you trigger it, it, he will not evade for seven more seconds. But then the, after seven seconds goes by, he will evade with 100% chance again. So you have to be conscious of that. Now you see that passive timer has a different buff on it. And every time that it shows a different buff, that's the buff that he's going to get when you stun him. Now in this fight, you want to play very safe and cautious. As you can see, if you're not, he will evade your hits at the worst time and kill you. Um, basically, this fight is about parrying at the right time and trying not to hit him unless he's stunned or unless it's a safe time with no evade. You can steal his regen to keep you very topped up. And ideally, you want to steal a regen and a power gain at the same time. So you can see that passive power gain when you stun him becomes active. Then you want to throw your special one. And if he doesn't have that much power to begin with, you can see he'll only have one bar of power to use, which means you can easily dex that special attack. However, if he already had some power, it'll push him to two bars and that's why you want to have a regen at the same time because then you can tank the hits from the special two and regen all the way through it. Now once you throw your special three you're going to steal those buffs and it's going to give you um, some boost in power as well as any buff that you trigger is after that. So you can see we got a big fury now and a regen and you have to be careful when you try to reapply the curse because he will sometimes evade those hits. Once you have done that you still have to be careful because if you trigger a power gain on him without the curse and without three bars of power, he's then going to get three bars and kill you. So once again here you can see we're stealing a regen and a power gain so that we can block the special two hits. I tanked the whole thing just to show you that you can still survive it. Now when you throw off the special three, you apply the curse and any buff that is triggered at that time is going to go to you. At this point you just want to parry a lot and not even worry about trying to hit him unless he is stunned. And if you can, you want to get yourself up to three bars of power or keep keep parrying until you get a power gain. But once that curse ends, you want to be careful not to parry him as long as he or if he has a power gain ready to trigger. So if you trigger a heal, it sucks because you lose some of that damage that you did. If you trigger an armor up, it's not a big deal, but that power gain will mess you up unless you have three bars of power to throw again. So it can still be a tedious fight. And ideally, you want to get a fury active and a power gain so that you can push yourself up to another special three with a fury on you at the same time. Now you can see the curse is ending. He has a passive power gain. I ended up stunning him and he gained power yet again. Thankfully, he ended up throwing a special two, so he didn't get three bars of power. What I should have done right there was to parry him for the power gain first. You can also steal a power gain with your special one um, in the middle of the fight to try to save the situation. Um, but I do recommend just playing very slow and only trying to do things, only parry him when you have three bars of power and just take it take it slow and careful because it can get very annoying. Now, um, as I said, you, the ideal situation is to get three bars of power and a fury with the curse active. So right now he has a fury passive there and I steal that and then I go to throw a special three um, with that fury active and this is where you're going to see the nice damage that you get because that is a very potent fury. So if you play cautious, careful, slow, don't parry him if you're not certain that you have uh, three bars of power or the curse on him. Um, and then also try not to attack into him if he is not stunned and definitely don't finish your combos. And that should allow you to have the easiest and smoothest time at defeating this boss. Now, if you have a very bad run, a very bad start, you can force quit the game and restart and you'll be still alive and you won't have to waste as many revives. I know it's not the most intended mechanic in the game, but it will help you out. So I did want to mention it. I really do hope that this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.